They done threw these boys to the woods. Damn. Unless they started over. I just see three ball. Okay, they got a decent shooting from the corners. Good. Good try. Good pass. Green. Shit, <laughs> come on, old man. <laughs> the real old man right here. Jump. The shot. Might go in. Still. The button. Damn, they don't let you do the R1, L1 anymore, man. This shot. That's deep, though. Okay. <laughs> Big tools. Great box box. Shot. Ooh, nice. Sport, stop at the wing. Get there, get there. Oh, the game is slow, huh? Damn, I wasn't even looking at the score. Daddy. What's up? Daddy. Hmm? Okay, hold on. Get that rebound. Good defense. <laughs> Green. Okay, dirty for that. Hey, y'all get from over here. Get get on. What's up? Rebound, he's giving it to me. The shot. That's late. Good 
Your pad has. Ah, nice. There, there. Good. I'm here. I don't say that, but I really got an interior. I just don't want to be down there. Top of the key. Two K just not gonna let you shoot a hundred percent, dog. Two K not gonna have no sixty and seventy from the three. They not going for that this year. You might you gotta play like a, a few games to have a high three point. If you play a lot of games, I don't see it being high like that. That's all just very patient. Ain't got no other choice but to let you hit. For his lots of questions. But to start with. What is your definition of a high-performance person? Um, being all that you can be every day. 24-7, 365, being all you can be. If we would like to improve the quality of our lives, personally and professionally, what would be your advice? What can we do? What is most important? Well, the most important thing is self-esteem. Um, the people that we read about, the people that we um, admire, um, the Elon Musks, the Steve Jobs, the Warren Buffetts, etc., all have one thing in common. They have extremely high self-esteem. And, um, of course, you've heard me say this before, self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. And, uh, unfortunately, we're with our parents the first seven or eight years of life. Uh, Ergo, uh, we don't have too much high self-esteem. But to build high self-esteem, and the way you build high self-esteem, if you're 25, 35, or 45, is to uh, be around, uh, surround yourself with other people that have high self-esteem. Uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And so uh, you can still, you can reverse your childhood by who you associate with. How do you do that? Well, you find people that are, that are where you want to be, but they're already there. You're 22 years old, you're 32, you're 41 years old, and there's a guy or a gal who's 45 years old who is where you want to be. They've accomplished a lot of things. If you're into, uh, they're saving the world, they're using their money for good causes, go associate with those people. Be around those people. And they're easy to find. Uh, but you, they're not going to knock on your door. They're not going to come to your apartment or your flat and ask you, oh, can I help you? And, uh, and again, the best tool I've ever seen and it's almost been, it's like it was designed for this, is LinkedIn. It's the best social media tool uh, there ever was for what we're discussing. And uh, you can find these people. Now, just remember, everybody that's on LinkedIn, all the, I don't know, 20 million or whatever people that are on LinkedIn are all there for one reason. They're there because they want to do business, they want to meet people. Unlike some of the other social medias like Facebook uh, or Twitter or uh, 
uh, and I don't even know the names of the others, but I mean, LinkedIn, they're there for a common purpose. They have a common bo uh, bond. They have a common goal. They want to expand their horizons, and it's a great tool. But you say it's so easy? No, it's not, no, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying that makes it easier, that tool. But um, the, uh, there are other people that want to be all they can be. There are other people that want to expand their horizons. Uh, Gallup did a poll in 2016, worldwide, 87.6% of all the people on the planet, 87.6% of all the people on the planet are unhappy. I'm going to say it again because I know they, these are Dutchmen, right? 87, we'll just, we'll just round it off. 87% of everybody that walks the face of the earth, 7.65 billion people are unhappy. So what went wrong? Well, I mean... Where did it start? Well, if, you're, if you were born in Biafra, I mean the odds are against you. But if you were born in the Netherlands, which a lot of you were, Rightly or wrongly, you had a better chance, a better opportunity than the poor kid born in Biafra. Okay? What have you done with it? If anything. Most of you, I can just look. I wore my glasses. Normally, I like to uh, be filmed without my glasses. But I, last time, I didn't wear my glasses, so I couldn't see your faces. I've got my glasses on now, so I can see your faces. You know what I'm getting at. You have not used the opportunities whereas the people in the third, fourth, fifth world countries uh, use those opportunities uh, to uh, be all they can be. And uh, money's not everything in the world, but money's the only thing anybody keeps track of. And so you can use that money that you make, uh, as the um, Gates are doing, in uh, trying to save the earth, save the world, uh, and uh, to do good. But it all starts, you have to be serious about it. Most of the people that are uh, engaged in personal development, for example, aren't serious. They're just, um, it, it takes up three or four or five hours of their time a week, and, uh, and so they're fiddle-farting around and they're not taking it serious. If you want to take it serious, you know, uh, Michael is a successful mentee of mine, and you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, for uh, he uh, putting on these kinds of events. But he got serious about it a number of years ago, uh, and he's doing a lot of good. How many of you can say the same? How many of you can say that you're serious about it? How many of you can actually say that you're trying to be all you can be? Now, I, I won't insult you by asking you to raise your hand because you'll just lie. We, we, we all know what the real answer is, don't we? You're not. And so, if you want to be all that you can be, and if you want to be a high-performance person, uh, and you don't have to be, I mean, 98% of all the high-performance people on the planet are introverts. I'm going to say it again slow because they're Dutchmen, right? 98% of all the people on the planet that are high performance are introverts. Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates have something in common. They're introverts just like you. What means? Maybe we have to explain this more. Okay. Introverts meaning that um, the, um, you don't say what you really feel. Introverts is you, you don't... Uh, uh, you, you don't act as if you really wanted to show the person that you don't dis you, uh, disagree with them. Introverts are when your parents were telling you shit when you were growing up, you just put your head down and kept your mouth shut. And that's why you're introverted now as adults. Um, as you can plainly see, I, I wasn't raised that way. Uh, my, my father said, if you've got something in, in your mind, it should come out of your lips. If you've got something in your mind, it should come out your mouth, Dan. And God, God knows, I took it to heart. And I've, I've lived that way all my life. Um, the, um, uh, at the TED Talk I gave a couple of days ago, um, uh, which Michael uh, was there uh, to talk to the kids, it was quite interesting when I told them that I've been talking like this since I was a teenager. I've been talking shit since I'm a teenager. which is some time ago. Well, I'll be 74 in a couple months, so it is some time ago. But the point is that I had self-esteem. I didn't know till I got grown up and was an adult that everybody didn't have self-esteem. I didn't understand that. I didn't realize that everybody didn't have self-confidence. I didn't realize that everybody didn't have self-worth. Because the kids that I hung with 
all were like I was because their parents were like, gave them a good role model. Most of the people that come to people like Michael or any of the, the, the gurus out there, and I call him a guru, come to them because the, uh, you, you were lacking something in your childhood. In my particular case, a lot of people come to me because I'm the alpha male father they never had. I asked the question a couple days ago. How many of you, you can raise your hand with this, how many of you have kids? Fuck, too bad, but anyway, you have kids, okay? Don't raise your hand now. How many of you would like to have your kids grow up just like your parents? You know the answer, don't you? Close to zero. Because they were shitty role models. Now, I'm not going to ask the second question. How many of you would like your kids to grow up and be like you? <laughs> Allah forbid. God forbid. But being a high-performance person is a full-time job. Uh, Michael's known me 20, over 20 years. I'm like this when I wake up in the morning to brush my teeth. I'm like this when I brush my teeth before I go to sleep. I'm like this 24-7, 365, and I've been like this for the better part of 50 years. I'm always like this. I'm always pushing the edge of the envelope. And that's why, you know, I'm an overnight success. I've been doing this, I've been coaching 25 and a half years, but all of a sudden I'm popular as hell, uh, but I've been doing this for 50 years. I have the same habits today as I had 50 years ago. The exact same habits. But they're, now they're just ingrained in me. They're ingrained in me. Um, and for those of you that have never been around the high performance people like I just alluded to, the Warren Buffetts, Elon Musk, uh, God rest his soul, Steve Jobs, who I happen to have known, they were like this 24-7, 365. It wasn't an act. Now, I know Michael's like this all the time, but he and I both know people that are considered gurus that they have a stage face and they have their real face. They don't walk their talk. And part of being a high-performance person is walking your talk. Walking your talk. And um, I know Michael does, otherwise I wouldn't come here and, uh, you know, and assist him. Uh, the, uh, because I get a lot of invitations from a lot of different people. And almost all of them I turn down because I know the guru uh, isn't walking his talk. The guru is being phony. He, the guru is being disingenuous. You're a grandfather now. You have a grandfather. Yes, I am. Thank you. you. You showed me the picture two days ago. He's the future legend. Correct. How will you be as a granddad for him? Hard. <laughs> It will be tough. Yeah, I'm hard. I was hard on his father and I'm going to be harder on him. Um, because I wish I could say with my hand on my heart, and this is where Michael and I, our philosophies vary. Um, if love got the job, do job done, you wouldn't need podcasts, you wouldn't need seminars. It doesn't. Tough love gets the job done. And the people that I've just alluded to, those names, uh, the, um, I was doing some research for my talk And I looked up Heineken, Herbert Heineken, who was the founder of Heineken beer in 1864. He talked his rich mother. Heineken's come from a wealthy family even before the beer. He talked his mother into buying a brewery in 1864, uh, which the, they then turned into uh, Heineken. Uh, Herard, or Gerard, was a hard ass, tough as nails. Now, I didn't know him. I'm not that old. But I did know Freddie Heineken, the old man. And he was hard ball buster. Now, I don't know his daughter, the current CEO of Heineken, but I'm told she's a ball buster. I did know Steve Jobs. I do know uh, Elon Musk. I do know Warren Buffett. I, I do know, and they're all ball busters. Success leaves clues, kids. I just named five of the greatest names in business in the last 150 years. And they all have one thing in common. They're ball busters. They're hard as fucking nails. Where does that leave you? So is it a choice? Correct. To, to be tough. F -f Firm but fair. What's the fair part? Because I can imagine that most people think you're so tough, so, you know, courageous but tough. 
I don't want to be like that. No, no, most people don't. I want to be liked. Yeah, well, see, you want to fit in. I don't, I'm the only speaker that you're ever going to hear that really, with all his heart, doesn't give a shit. If I leave here, you liking me, I did something wrong. I fucking did something wrong. I'm not here for you to like me. I'm here as a favor to Michael, my mentee, for 20 years. I'm not here, you know, if you all die today, I don't give a shit. And I mean it. But Steve Jobs didn't give a shit about you either. Warren Buffett doesn't give a shit about you today. Elon Musk doesn't give a shit unless you're going to buy a Tesla car. Don't you understand? Don't you get it? You think Elon Musk wants to fit in? We know the answer is no, right? You want to fit in because you had poor role models at home. Most everybody in this room is a pleaser. You want to be liked? When I read about that people commit suicide because they were unliked on Facebook, it makes me sick to my stomach. How can the world get that fucked up that because of fucking Facebook, people are going to kill themselves? What have we come to? God almighty. Don't you see there's something fundamentally wrong with that? In that regard, the Chinese, they're banning Facebook. But 98% of the high-performance people are introverts. 98% of the high-performance people on the planet, um, the uh, wanna be liked. 98%, we're talking, I'm at the cutting edge, the hard edge. He's not at the hard edge, he's someplace in the middle. But being liked doesn't get you a raise when you're working for uh, whoever you're working for. Efficiency, accountability. Most people that come to seminars are there because they weren't held accountable when they were growing up. There used to be a saying when I was growing up, which is very politically incorrect now, spare the rod and spoil the child. The rod meaning beating, okay? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Now we have kids, and I'm sure many in the audience can uh, attest to this, that have never been reprimanded, have never spanked by their parents, never been screamed at never been slapped, never been in a schoolyard fight with another kid. Um, and look at you. I mean, we have uh, two tests on my uh, website. All my stuff's free, by the way. Uh, one is uh, called a, um, a snowflake test. 96.4% of the people that take the snowflake test fail. The first or second question on the test is, if someone spit in your mother's face, and I'm gonna say this real slow so that you're Dutch, I remember. <laughs> if someone spit in your mama's face, Baldy, you in the front row right here, okay? <laughs> what are the choices? There's four or five choices. The choice that's most clicked is I would try to ascertain, I would try to figure out where he was coming from and if he had a bad day. Now, what the fuck does that have to do with spitting in your mama's face? <laughs> I would try to figure out if he had a bad day. Does that mean if he had a bad day, it's all right to spit in your mother's face? We have another test. It's called super success test. 98.4% flunked that test because we decided to make a softer test. Okay, well, maybe the guys really believe that they shouldn't punch the guy's fucking, you know, stab him in the eye uh, with a knife for spitting on your mama. Okay, we'll do a new test. It's called the uh, super success test. So we ask softer questions, hoping, praying that the results are going to be better. Boy, never underestimate how wrong you can be, kids. So the softer test was uh, based on what kind of sacrifices are you willing to be super successful? 60 hours a week. Nobody is willing to work 60 hours a week to be successful. Nobody's willing to miss uh, an anniversary, a uh, wedding anniversary, to be successful. Nobody is willing to miss a holiday. If you booked a holiday and something important happened in business, would you tell your family to go on the holiday without you? And you're not going to go. Nobody said yes. And it's got 27 questions or 26 questions. And they flunked that test worse than the other test. 
because you're not willing to make any sacrifices to be high performance. I still work 50, 60, I don't consider it work. I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. 35 years. But the world has changed. I mean, the, um, and the kids, and when, when I started giving all my product away for free about 10 years ago, and the reason I went from the highest pr priced product on the planet to zero, because I got so fucking tired of you crying, moaning, and whinging, oh, it's too expensive, I can't afford it. So now I give it to you for free. I get three times more emails now. Man, there's so much shit here. I don't know where to start. What do I do? So then a year ago, we developed a new product, QLA for dummies. It was called QLA for retards, but we got in trouble <laughs> with the Retardation Association. They're going to sue me for using that word. So we pulled that out and we said, just dummies. Dummy seems to be a politically correct, uh, acceptable word, but not retard, okay? And... Um, but the results are even worse. Because what you're saying is, okay, fine. I wasn't raised to go hit somebody if they spit in my mother's face, but I, uh, that, I'm not willing to uh, miss a holiday and, and, and stay at, at, uh, in the office and work and let my family go without me. So the bottom line, you're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to sacrifice anything to be a high performance person. I.e., it's all for free on your website. All Correct. the tests, all the information. Everything's the free. The audio book is on. Can we buy the book still, the, the red one? No, the, the, no, the, uh, the first hundred million is audio for free. And then uh, the, the book that I think is better than that is the $50 billion ebook, uh, uh, which is also free. Um, there's 16.8 uh, gigs of free material. Everything that I've ever produced is free, um, the, um, because I wanted to take the last excuse from that guy and that guy and that gal, why you didn't do it. So I give it to you. I certainly don't need the money. I only charge, as I was telling you uh, uh, the other night at dinner, I used to give seminars at the airport, a thousand people, for free in the 90s. Absolutely, 100% free. And I fed him lunch. And we had cocktails afterwards. And we'd get these nasty uh, notes. I didn't like the lunch. Uh, the uh, chicken was cold. Uh, you, you try to feed a thousand people, the chicken's gonna be cold. Uh, I didn't like, the, the bartender didn't pour enough uh, whiskey in my drink. This is free. And then, the, the coup de grace, and when I stopped doing that, they wanted me to pay for parking when they came to the free seminar. So I stopped doing that. Sometimes you sound like a tough boy, like hell. But I you, am. But you, no, you care about the world because otherwise you wouldn't no, do what right, you do. No, Michael's right. He's, trying, he's, he's looking for my Achilles heel, my uh, chink in my armor. I don't care about saving the world, but I want you to be able to save the world. That's true. That's true. And we've created now up to $775 billion with meatheads just like, well, maybe not, there's not too many Dutch on that list, but meatheads just like you, $775 billion in the last 25 and a half years. And a lot of the guys and gals are trying to save the world. I mean, they're just, you know, but I tell you, Think of a product or a service that changes a billion lives, i.e. Facebook, and you will, by definition, become extremely wealthy and you can go and take that money and the followers that you'll have uh, to go uh, enhance the, the, uh, the world in whatever manner you see fit. Our only benchmark is as long as it's legal, moral, and ethical. Anything goes. Now, depending on where you, where you are in the world, the moral and ethical can swing in the wind because everybody's ethics is not the same as somebody else's ethics and everybody's morality is not the same as everybody else. But where you go, and when you go to a place that has a rule of law, uh, legal is legal. 
And so, uh, but we've got a, you know, a, lot of, a lot of people that are utilizing the QLA methodology um, all over the planet. There are some places in the world, as I've told Michael, where it's harder, okay. Uh, some of the African continent is harder uh, because of the corruption. Russia is harder because of corruption. Not impossible, but harder. Uh, but if you're in a, uh, a, a major country that has a rule of law, QLA is easy. Uh, uh, easier than any other game in town. And the whole system is based on no money because I started with no money and the kids that have created these 775 billion, uh, with one or two exceptions, have started with no money. Uh, and, the, um, and it's quite remarkable. And right now, hate him or love him, President Trump has changed the world forever. President Trump has changed the financial fabric of this planet forevermore. Full disclosure, I knew the president 25 years ago. I haven't talked to him in 25 years. But he has changed the financial fabric of this world forever. So what did he change? He changed their, the lowest interest rates in 5,000 years. They're giving away money at ING Bank. Literally. What are you going to tell your kids and grandkids 20 years from now when your grandson that yet to be born comes up and says, Granddad, what did you do during the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the planet? And you know what you're going to say? I wish I could speak Dutch now so I could say it in Dutch. I sat with my thumb up my fucking ass and did nothing. They understand. They, they know enough English, they got that. They understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what, what are you going to tell them? Right now, the, the, the energy in all uh, the, uh, across the board in the world is so upbeat. And when President Trump wins again, and I was one of the first that predicted he was going to win before he decided to run, he's going to win in a landslide. The Democrats are handing it to him on a silver platter. Um, he's, he's changing the world. Um, because... And what he's doing with the Russians, or not, excuse me, with the Chinese, uh, the Chinese have been screwing over the world with uh, the tariffs and uh, stealing intellectual property, etc., for 40, 50 years. He is now taking them to task, um, as somebody else should have, Obama should have, Bush should have, Clinton should have, and then Bush again should have, and whoever came up after, they should have done, but they didn't, because there's collateral damage. And right now, the farmers in America are getting hurt. Some of the farmers in the EU are getting hurt because of these tariffs, but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Otherwise, the leading country in this, on this planet is going to be a communistic country, not a free country. And you'll wish somebody had done it. Um, but he's changed the world. He just has. And it's, um, it's quite remarkable to see, because I, I have mentees, students, devotees, whatever you want to call them, all over the planet. Uh, and uh, the stories um, that I get back, um, and uh, it's just, it's incredible, the, the good uh, that they're doing. I have many here in the Netherlands that are just, you know, in America, they'd say crushing it, or, but they, I mean, they're just doing significantly well. They're rolling up various industries, starting with no money, uh, and it's all on my site, it's all for free. Uh, the methodology, the same methodology he's used a couple times when he's brought himself uh, back from um, uh, uh, financial death, uh, which he shared with you. It's not a secret, otherwise I wouldn't mention it. It's not a secret, uh, but he's used it a couple times himself, and it's um, all very doable, um, but you've got to want to do more than just talk about it. And getting back to your initial question, uh, being high performance uh, the, uh, is to take it seriously. And for those of you that are in young, t late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, you can do this process five, six, seven, eight times. For those of you in your 40s, you can do it two or three times. For those of you in your 50s or 60s, you can do it once or twice. Um, and, but we are creating generational wealth, which would normally take 20 to 25 years, which is the definition of a generation, uh, in three to seven years. Three years if you do everything perfect, uh, seven years if you do everything wrong. Um, and most people, they average about five years. Let's go back in time before we go to QLA and explain QLA a little bit more. You had a company. Correct. Built it from $820. Correct. And 
took it public for 450 million. Correct. That was when? 1984. Okay. Then after you start coach, coaching. I got thrown out by the shareholders. Uh, and in 1993, I gave my first seminar in Los Angeles. Um, and the, I've been coaching ever since. But this century, I've only given, the uh, last 20 years, I've only given the seminar at the castle. I went from giving them, a, by the way, the first seminars I gave were all free. I gave everything free because I didn't need the money. But I had no accountability. Let's say I take this table right here. And I, and, and I, get, I, I, I train you for free. You know, some of, some of you are going to go uh, play, learn how to play golf better. Some of you, I, there's no accountability. That is why I don't like a charity, charitable organization, because it's hard to, to keep people accountable that work for a charity. I mean, they're doing it for free, right? So, um, so I went from free to high priced to only at the castle where I hold them accountable. Alright, we gotta we gotta tighten up. Yeah. Alright, let's push the point. Alright. Finish strong, finish strong. Good deal. Blitz. <laughs> well, I'd be tired of fucking getting blitz by shit like that. In there. Good shot. What are you doing? Good duck. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Okay. All right, Chad, I'm going to get off, man. I definitely appreciate y'all for coming through. Shout out to Sport and uh, JG, man. I got them fatigued. It game, man. My bad on that one, there. Yep. To some doodle bounds. Okay. All right. I'll let y'all tomorrow. All right, chat. <clears throat> Damn, nine steals. <laughs> Bro, ain't no way a game with nine steals, dog. That's the same. Man. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah.